Good day, fellow investors. Today we're going to talk about three stocks that unfortunately are not the crazy stocks traded on YouTube that will go up 10 times, 1000% in three months, explosive stocks that get thousands of views. This will be a video about three stocks, three grocery stocks that provide the food you eat. So we might say there is some safety within them, plus they pay dividends. What are dividends? Those stocks do buybacks, dividends buybacks, rewarding shareholders, thinking of shareholders. That's such an old concept these days, but it is what it is. I am boring, I'm old. So these are the stocks that I talk about. Then these stocks grow too, a little bit, not skyrocketing to Mars, but grow too. And are very, very interesting because the return on investment is in the high single digits. Kill me, I know, just high single digits, crazy. So let's discuss Kroger, Sprouts Farmers Market, and Ahold Delheise, or I'll call it Albert Heijn, Dutch deformation. So Kroger, the market capitalization is 25, 26 billion. So if we look at the long, long term chart, it's a clear compounder, the stock is up 20 times over what is this, 40 years, so especially exploded in 2012. And since then, it didn't do really great. And there have been these bottoms that were actually great buys. But still, at 25 billion with 1.7 billion in free cash flows, all returned to shareholders, it still gives a 6-7% yield plus the 2%, 3%, growth that they expect. Sprout Farmers Market, much smaller company, similar price to earnings ratio of 10, very boring, and it IPO'd in 2013, and since then it's down about 50%. Keep in mind 2013, Whole Foods or Whole Paycheck, very exuberant stocks, growth stocks at that moment in time, and Sprout Farmers Market was in that basket of stocks, Whole Foods was later acquired by Amazon, but it didn't deliver probably on expectations, or it did. We'll see later. It grew revenues, it, it increased profits, profitability, free cash flows, buybacks, everything, but the stock kept going down. Perhaps the expectations here were a little bit too much then, but still, the business and the fundamentals is what matters now not what has happened over the last seven years. And then we have Ahol, Delheise, Albert Heijn, and this Koninklijke Royal means that the company has been around for more than a hundred years. In 1987, the Dutch Queen gave it the royal title because it was in operations for a hundred years, which means we are now 133 years. It's very likely that the company will be around another 100 years, which is not something you can say about many other high growth stocks that everybody is talking about. The long term chart, so this again shows the exuberance and the growth in the Dutch stock market. These were some accounting issues that destroyed the stock in the early 2000s. They settled everything and since then it has been a steady steady growth rate. But also you can see the line of growth is also steady and it keeps growing. It has good businesses and we'll discuss that in immediately. Let's start with Kroger. It doesn't need any introduction. It's the second grocer in the United States. And just to mention here, Ahold is the fourth grocer in the United States. So Albert Heijn is more of an American company than European. Let's take immediately a look at the numbers. Revenue has been growing slow and steady over the years. They constantly do partnerships, acquisitions, and they manage to grow. Also net income, steady, slow and steady growth, which is typical for grocers. Earnings have grown at a faster rate because the company did buybacks. Look at this. 10 years ago, the number of shares outstanding was 1.2 billion. Now we are at 800 million. They are constantly doing buybacks and they have lowered the number of shares outstanding by what is this? 40%. That's really, really amazing. Plus 
they are paying a dividend and as they are lowering the number of shares outstanding so the dividend apart from them increasing it it's increasing per share and that's the key when it comes to you and investing plus they are doing these buybacks at price earnings ratio of 10 and that's again uh, improvement value for the shareholder and you can also see how over time despite the dividends and buybacks the book value has been increasing cash flows there has been the covid boom for all retailers and grocers but cash flows are around 1.5 billion let's say in a normal year and this is their target remain committed to generating constantly strong and attractive total shareholder returns we have the buybacks and the dividends yield the hoped net earnings growth with acquisitions and partnerships and everything that should give what i said a high single digit i'm always a little bit more conservative a high single digit return if there is a price earnings multiple expansion from 10 to a market average of 20 then it might give even better returns in the medium Term. Kroger, we got to it, so it has, let's say, a margin of safety. It has a narrow moat because of its scale, so it really can push suppliers on prices, it can scale the data, everything is going online now, really delivering individual products to the customer. So a lot of potential there as they use the technology, the data everybody is talking about to improve their margins. If we go to the financials, let's take these financials as a measurement, 1.7 billion for valuation. Okay, they made more money this year, that's a positive, but I say over the long term, this will be the likely guidance. And they return all the free cash flows to shareholders and then grow organically. If I go to my valuation table, this is the valuation for Kroger. Oh, sorry, 1.5. I think it is 1.7 billion in free cash flows. And let's say I have taken here free cash flows because they are returning those through buybacks and shareholders so i haven't in included here the buyback return and the growth from there and let's say they grow at the net growth rate of two percent over the years half of that is inflation half of that is organic growth discount rate at 10 percent terminal multiple 15 and the intrinsic value is 23 billion if i change the discount rate to nine 24 billion, 8, 26 billion. So from a current normal perspective, Kroger gives a high single digit, 8% investing return. Plus it's a relatively safe business because it's big and uh, for now we still have to eat. I know we are in a data world, you need to be a data company and perhaps in a few years they will feed us data and technology but for now we still have to eat broccolis and whatever i don't know how is the situation with you let me know in the comments below oh by the way if you want to download this template and play around in the case scenarios and we have also you can check all the other stocks i'll put a link also to the written source here you can just go to my stock market research platform just go down in the curriculum and i'll put a direct link for this so you have here the latest analysis and part of this is my taking a look at retailers now and you can find my conclusion on growers all the written parts i have looked also at uh, what has happened in the conference call so much more detailed than this video if you are interested you can always check there and here you can always download this template and play around with kroger sms ahold and all the other stocks that we have discussed openly in public also check around a little bit what i do perhaps there is some value for long-term investing for you here with the companies that i follow and that's also what I'm going to do with these grocers. I'm going to put them on my watch list, follow over time, look at conference calls and see how it fits my portfolio. And I hope that the same I do with this video. And if you get value from this, all I ask is for a like 
And if you haven't and you like these videos, consider subscribing. And more specifically, what I have seen when I looked at the sector, there are these opportunities that happen when analysts become very, very pessimistic on these grocers. One of the first YouTube videos that I made was exactly on Kroger saying how it will beat the S&P 500 if you buy it here. I think I did it somewhere on the 20th of June 2017. If you want to laugh and if you want to see me three years ago in my first YouTube videos, I'll put the link in the description below. But don't laugh too much. And with those that bought here, of course it went even lower, but I think they did a good return in a very short period of time. And even Warren Buffett added a billion of Kroger here. So very interesting stock, Buffett owned, and you have to see how it fits your portfolio. Next stock, as we said, Sprouts Farmers, Market, NASDAQ, SFM. So really bad performance over time, but you'll see the fundamentals are really good. And I think it could be an interesting opportunity here or there. If we look at what they did with the fundamentals, look at this. They IPO'd and they have more than doubled their revenues. Net income exploded over time to 250 million compared to a market cap of 2.5 where it is, it's a price earnings ratio again of 10 and they have done incredible buybacks like Kroger, perhaps even more. The free cash flows has exacerbated now with COVID, but we are around 170 to 200 million. They present themselves like whole foods but cheaper or whole paycheck so they are not whole paycheck they are just cheaper and okay they are a specialty differentiated grocer and that's also the risk that's also why the stock goes down because 2013 everyone was exuberant and also me and my wife would constantly go to whole paycheck to leave our whole paycheck in London to buy at whole foods because there you had everything but over the last seven years all these retailers, others, Ahold, Kroger saw an opportunity and they filled their stores with specialty items, organic, whatever you wish. So you don't have the need that much to really go to a specialty store like Whole Foods and that has pushed their margins. Of course, when Lidl sell sells organic, then Sprout Farmers has to lower the margins. But still, they want to expand EBIT margins grow at low single digit comparable sales. They are still expanding in the country, hope to grow at 10% expanding by building smaller stores. And this is the key. They can increase gross margins, but this is what the analysts are looking. Since the IPO that they timed well, 8%, this was when the stock was double, 7% operating margin, and then the margin was going down to 4%. A big bump now for COVID, but this is what we have to take into account. And they will do good if they can keep it stable. And the, as I said, this is the problem. This is from Ahold. So you have Vega Favoriten Fund Nederland. So everywhere you turn around, you can buy vegetarian specialty, whatever now, because the money and the investments go where there is profitability. That's normal for competitive no mode sector. So keep in mind, it's not a mode sector. Tomorrow we'll discuss a stock that I also like and has a moat, a big one. So SFM valuation, I have put here a hundred million in cash flows that they can return to shareholders and left the other hundred million to investments for growth. So for now, let's say hundred million of buybacks that they do, they keep doing that over the long term. And then I have increased the buyback payments in 2026, let's say when their growth might subdue. And on that I have put terminal multiple of 20, so that's a 5% dividend or buyback yield in 10 years, and I get to a valuation of 2.4 billion for a 10% discount rate for SFM. If we compare to the price, yes, SFM is at a 10%, Kroger 8% we said, but there are also risks. If those margins keep contracting and that's the main worry and that's the main reason this is down. If Lidl, the hard discounters, everyone contracts, they forces them to contract the margin in organic and everything, then 
This might remain ugly for longer, but on the other hand, don't forget that you can download this as shown you before. On the other hand, there is a margin of safety because I think someone would take it out. Uh, hedge fund um, active investors would take it out at around 20 where we are here or 15. So there is a margin of safety. If they can improve margins, grow or just grow cash flows, they're stable margins. They hope to grow to double over the next 10 years. If that happens, then this stock will also double and exuberance might bring it to 40, 50, as it was the case in the early 2010s. So there is some risk, something again I will follow over time and compare for now. I'll discuss my investment conclusion a little at the end of the video. Let's still do Ahold. So Ahold, again, a diversified retailer. So we have Albert Heijn, we have the Amazon of the Netherlands, we have stores in Belgium and also stores in the US. I'm sure you are familiar with something of this. And the pearl gem, the, the crown jewel is Bold.com. They have an online retailer that's growing at 33% earlier now with COVID, 46% growth per year. And has sales of will be now around 4 trillion, for around 4 billion. Imagine a stock that's growing 40% and having sales of 4 billion. If it would be a separate stock, it would have a price to sales of 10 maybe. And just this would justify the market cap in this growth stocks environment. However, the fact that it doesn't have such a market cap tells you more about the other environment, other growth stocks, than about Ahold. Still, they are focusing on online, expanding online, and uh, trying to do what they did in the Netherlands. In the US, it's a different market, more competition. But for now, they are doing good. They have good cash flows, 1.7 billion. So similarly to Kroger, this is euros. And yes, they are exposed to the US. You can read more about that if you want to dig deeper in my reports. If we go to Ahold's valuation, they are using a billion of this to do buybacks and 700 to for dividends that they are growing. So I have included the complete cash flows in the valuations. Let's say slow growth in profitability because the online takes a lot of money. But this is the, let's say, stable case. And we get to an intrinsic value of 27 billion, which is if I look at the market cap, $32 billion, we are there. So again, for a 6% discount rate. So that's what the market is pricing now. But that 6% you get through dividends and buybacks. So this is the valuation. You can play around, follow over time. I will adjust these numbers also over time and see how it goes. This is a SNP from my comparative table. And uh, I have, this is my intrinsic estimation value at a 10% discount rate. This is the current market cap. And unfortunately, everything is below one. So it doesn't even give me a 10% return. And I'm looking for business returns between 10 and 15%. And unfortunately, this is therefore just on the watch list. These things are just automatically, I'll be increasing my list over time. And perhaps one day, somewhere, someday, we will see Kroger giving 10, 11% with the margin of safety, and then we might strike. That's also my conclusion because it's a no moat industry, so compet it's extremely competitive, cutthroat competitive. And you have to be very, very careful at when you buy these extremely highly competitive stocks. Over time, there are opportunities because the fundamentals are there. You got to eat. So very interesting. If you want me to follow them for you over time, the earnings, uh, the earnings calls and everything, you can check what I do on my platform. There are already 30 stocks that we follow and I will update them all as we are entering earnings season. So it will be a great time to join the platform. Plus, if you look at here, there will be great comments and it's a really great group there on the platform. So I'm very proud of that. And you might see if it fits you or not. To conclude on the grocers, also, see how this fits your portfolio. US is a different, we from Europe have also the currency risk. So something again to think if you don't have the currency risk, and if you like a grocer, a stable company at 7, 8, 9, 10% yield, or you just want to take 
more of the potential upside for SFM, for example, see how it fits your portfolio. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments what you think of this. And I'll see you in the next video tomorrow with the European mode stock.